Next on my list of things to do is make my inside slip pockets for the bottom that we can put our manual in or whatever else you want to put in here. I wanted my little um, two and a half by six inch ruler to fit in here and didn't think about the height of it. So the pocket that I had for that didn't work, but this time I'm going to make sure that I get enough room for this. I can just put a credit card or the little uh, pins from the featherweight shop. I can stick those in there, but I really want that ruler in this case. I really, this is my favorite little ruler. It really looks cruddy because I use it so much, but I want that to fit in. I also want my manual to fit in. So that's what we're going to be doing next, and I'll show you how I figure it. Um, in this case, this is the one with the side tray. So I really only have 11 inches here to work with because I don't want my manual back in the, where I have my oil or the little tray I want in front of that. So I only really have about 11 inches to work with. Now I am showing the second case I covered. It is an older type case with a tray. I still did the pockets along the back. Things to think about when you decide on pocket placement. Number one, how easy will it be to slide your machine with the booklets in place? On both these cases, it was easier to slide in my machine if the booklets are removed first. Number two, you want to place your pockets on your lining so the tray will still fit in when your booklets are in place. Number three, you don't want your pockets so wide they go behind the corner supports for your tray. That happened with this case. It still worked out and everything fits in, but the little supports sit a little further out than I would have liked. This is my third attempt. This is a 50s type case and this is my favorite pocket placement. Two pockets on the back and one at the end where the small metal tray sits. Again, make sure your pocket is set low enough so that your little black tray still fits in. This is my latest case and I decided not to add any pockets in the bottom part of the case. I plan on making a pocket on the lid for my booklets to be stored. As you watch the next videos, you will see a combination of these cases as I install the interior OD coated fabric. It was hard to film and show the interior as I worked, so I put together the best angle shots from all three cases. In the case that I'm doing now, it has the tray, so I have almost a full 12 inches to work with. So that's where I'm getting my measurements, 12 inches. And I want my pocket to be, I just randomly picked a number and I want it to be about four inches tall. So I cut a piece from salvage edge to salvage edge. I cut a piece from salvage edge to salvage edge, eight and a half inches. So I've got a long piece that's eight and a half inches wide and this will make my pocket for the interior bottom and it will make all my uh, holding pockets for my lid insert later. So I have eight and a half. Let me put these aside for a minute. And I know I have 12 inches to work with and I don't want raw edges when I make my pocket so I need a little bit to turn in on the edges. So I'm going to measure out a piece that's 13 inches. And you can measure it, make it any size that works for you. This is just what I'm doing on this case, but you can do it however it works for you. So I have the rest of this material that I'll use later on my insert. And I have a little piece of SF101 uh, interfacing that I'm going to use. Cotton material is so thin and this I'm also not going to OD coat this 
but the cotton material is so thin that I just need a little more stability to it. So this is for my top. I've already got that cut for my lid insert. And then I have another SF-101 interfacing, and I just buy it like this from Joanne Fabrics. So, it, and basically SF-101 is just really lightweight. It's almost like cotton, so you're getting two layers. Um, so it's just got a little more stability. Your pockets won't flap. For this, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay it on here. This, the interfacing I cut at eight inches by, I'm gonna cut it by 13 also. Just match up with my first. <clears throat> so we're ready now, I'm gonna iron this on. Okay, I press my fabric good first. Then I apply my interfacing. And I do spritz my interfacing just so if it uh, shrinks a little bit, gets that shrinkage out of there before I get started. And the directions do come with the SF-101 interfacing. I can't remember the number of seconds you're supposed to leave it. I can kind of tell if it doesn't pick off, that start, that's picking off a little bit, so I'm gonna hold it a little bit longer. And I'm just gonna make one big tube for this pocket to make it easier on me in the long run, I'm going to go ahead and fold my ends in. And I'm folding them in. Up for, for my measurements, I need a little less than 12 inches. And I cut this at 13. So if I take this inch off, I've got 12 inches right now, and I want it a little less than 12. I don't use a pattern. I just kind of go with what feels right. And lots of times I've had to redo because of that, too. And I'm going to do an inch on this side. And this is just going to help me later so that I don't have to turn it after I've made my tube. So I'm going to spritz that a little bit. It's not staying real well. a second. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make one log tube. So I'm going to get some clips. And I'm going to take it to my machine and stitch about mm, half inch down. I'm going to use about a 12 on my stitch length. Next, I'll turn my tube. And 
and I don't want that my, my seam is going to be in the back. I don't want my seam to be right at the top. I want a nice curve of the material. So we sewed about a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to lay this out. Don't iron on your ends that you're going to be folding in. And if you spritz it a little bit, it'll stay better. Then now, since we already folded these ends, I'm not going to iron on my folds, but I'm just going to iron the seam down here, make it a little easier. Since we've already pre-ironed, it makes it easier to turn in. And I want it to lay nice in here so I make my, sure my seam allowance is laying flat. Spritz that a little bit. Just making sure everything's laying flat in there. By the time you get um, your interfacing and everything in there, it's heavy, not terribly heavy, but it is heavy. So, okay, do it to the other end. Make sure your seam allowance is laying nice. it in. Spritz. And press. wasn't laying real nice there, so I'm just turning that so I have a sharp corner. I'm going to spritz it again. And now we have our tube for our pockets. I'm going to take it back to the machine, and my seam is going to go in the back. And let's measure it before I get started. It's about 11 inches now. So if I have 11 inches, I better double check because I don't want my pockets too little this time. It's going to work about perfect because we'll make three little pockets and we'll stitch it onto our lining here, here, and here. So I think that time, this time it's going to be perfect so that I can get my ruler in there that I want. So I'll take it back to the machine and do my top stitching. Okay, now that I've got this top stitched, I have two rows of stitching. I just like that. You can put one row, two rows, but I want my top stitched down well. And then I need to decide where to mark my lines. This book measures, hmm, I can't even see upside down, four inches on the ruler. So what I did was I measured over four and a half inches and marked a line. I gave myself about a quarter of an inch on each side of the book, maybe a little more. This book measured three and a quarter, so I did three and three fourths and made another line. And then I just checked to see, will my ruler fit in there? Yes, it will. So I'm ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside and get my fabric ready to line my case.